It only takes one person to change the consciousness of the planet. We've seen it too many times. And it, nobody chose those people. Nobody chose any of those people. They chose themselves. And God, I'm sure Martin Luther King felt a lot of fear every day, but it didn't stop him from showing up and being great. I think Gandhi, you know, was uncompromising in his will. And he, he was principled and other people caused them to see the same vision that he saw. And so, gosh, um, what a time in history now because it's, it's so important for people to see that so many things that are collapsing in the world currently today is because a new paradigm has to evolve out of that. And every single person has to be the example of change no matter what position they're in. And if we do this enough times, we give other per people permission to do the same. I believe that in time, a prison could become a monastery if enough people begin to make those changes. And it's not like abstain from life or abstain from living, but something else is transformative. It's happening where, wow, you come, you, 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 you make your change in, in a great place and you get closer to love, you get closer uh, to gratitude, you get closer to freedom, you get closer, closer to joy, you get closer to bliss, and now it doesn't matter what environment you're in, you're, you're happy with yourself, and I think that's when you really get out of jail, when you really get out of prison. When you're feeling unhappy, when you're feeling angry, uh, I think you want other people to feel the way you feel, and, and I don't think that's a conscious process, and so people who hate themselves hate others, and people who are angry with themselves are angry with others, people uh, you know, who, who uh, you know, suffer, you know, for some reason, love to love to be around other people that suffer, suffer, get enough people in a state of joy and get enough people in a state of love and do it in the proper way, not positive thinking. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something completely different, true, true execution. And to be able to measure that and say, hey, I, I actually did it. We have devices that can teach people how to do that. Wow, God, and that becomes your journey. You're not going to be part of the tribe in the same way any longer. You're going, to, you're going to be something different and other people are going to notice it. And when other people notice that you're not showing up in the memory that they have of you, because we don't see things how they are, we see things how we are. When you show up differently in the smallest way, people notice that you're out of phase. There's not a pattern recognition any longer. And you're not responding or reacting or you're not doing the same thing in the same way. I think other people notice that right away and they move closer to that because they're waiting for someone to lead. Well, what if everybody's leading? I think it's a, it's a powerful message. And, and, you know, when we do this in prison systems in Latin America, my whole thing is not only bring the family in, but let's, let's do something where we can begin to affect the world. You know, that's when it becomes really, really important. Well, if you think about this, and I've thought about it a lot, when you receive something favorable, or you've just received something favorable. If something wonderful just happened to you and surprised you, or something amazing is happening to you in the moment, you feel this feeling of gratitude. So the emotional signature of gratitude is something just happened to you that's wonderful, or something that's happening to you in the present moment is truly amazing. So gratitude is the ultimate state for the body and the mind to receive. So we only accept, believe, and surrender to information that are equal to, that's equal to our emotional state. We never accept, believe, and surrender information that's not equal to our emotional state. And you could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, and your body's going, no, you're not, you're miserable, you're unhappy, you're suffering, because the body and the mind are in opposition. Turns out 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 is a set of program um, habits where the body becomes the mind. So if we can move out of that state into a state of gratitude, then the body's believing, it doesn't know the difference, remember, between the real life experience that's creating the emotion of gratitude and the body in the state of gratitude by thought alone. So the body's believing it's living in a new environment. When it's living in a new environment and you begin to program it with certain thoughts, you can begin to influence the body to change. So the body begins to receive information in a state of gratitude. And, and that energy, when we feel gratitude, begins to do something so beautiful. We've seen this so many times. 
When you feel gratitude and your heart is feeling safe enough to create and move out of survival, it starts informing the brain. It starts sending like a, if you took a big sheet and you, and you, you know, give it a little quick rip, it would send a wave. Well, you see this kind of wave of energy move right into the brain and the brain moves into a very coherent creative state called alpha brain waves. Now, the heart is informing the brain. It's safe to create now. It's safe to have new ideas. It's safe to be present. And the heart starts producing more energy that begins to flood the brain to be more creative. So then the thoughts that the person thinks in a state of gratitude are more unlimited. They start believing in themselves and you can't believe in yourself without believing in possibility. And you can't believe in possibilities without believing in yourself. So gratitude is the state in which we begin to open the heart. It's a state in which we're able to receive. The body is believing it's in a new environment and it's the body's way more programmable and we can program the autonomic nervous system into a whole new expression of chemicals, hormones, gene expression and everything else and we, immune regulation we've measured all that and the body just gets stronger because it's out of stress and out of survival you know programming is called programming whether it's TV or whatever for a reason because when people stare into a screen we'll just say a TV as an example um, what they don't know is their brain waves are slowing down and they're suppressing their analytical facilities and what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. So when you stare into a TV and you're not thinking and analyzing and you're in trance, you're very suggestible to information and you can begin to program your autonomic nervous system into all different kinds of states that most people don't even know. So you watch television commercials, they're playing with your psyche the whole entire time, thinking, causing you to think that you need something outside of you to change your internal state. So we decided, my goodness, if we can teach people how to move into trance with their eyes open, then create a movie that where they're the star <laughs> and make it, as, make it as unlimited as you want, whatever that is, that you could program your autonomic nervous system in the same way. And just like when you hear a song on the radio and you start thinking of a time in your life with a certain person, a certain place, and a certain time, uh, that, that, that song is recalling an event, events from the past. Well, you could do the same exact thing with a mind movie. And when you combine it with a song and you're watching this movie of your future, if you keep watching it enough times, when you hear that song, it's going to cause you to remember your future, just like remember your past. And, People begin to program their subconscious mind in very, very interesting ways and they start having these incredible opportunities show up in their life because it's programmed that way. So we, we ask people to make movies of their future and within the realm of their understanding and acceptance to begin to watch that before they go to bed at night, before, you know, instead of watching some horror movie or some violent movie, let's program you into just feeling really good about you and believing in yourself and program yourself into a more unlimited state instead of a limited state. So we use the my movie technology all the time and we teach the science of how to reprogram the subconscious and it produces some pretty powerful changes in people's health and in their lives too. The walking meditation is so valuable, Fritzy, because you could have the best meditation in the world feeling all holy, all connected, in a great great place of gratitude and love and then you get up, you open your eyes, and there's somebody that's pushing your buttons and you forget everything. And you return back to your old self again. There's no possibility because that's the same. It's the same energy, it's the same personality, it's the same life. So then, what if you have been practicing how to open your heart and you got really good at it sitting down? What if you could stand up and practice that same exact thing, close your eyes and get raise your energy and get in that state and then say, okay, I'm gonna open my eyes now and I'm gonna practice, just like practicing, rehearsing uh, lines in a, in a movie. I'm gonna practice becoming this person. So how would I walk? How would I breathe? How would I move? Let me embody this energy. Let me get in the habit of how I'm gonna be as this new person. And so practicing it with your eyes open creates the habit of you becoming somebody else. And I want people to walk as if it's already happened. I want them to walk in the power and the, in the, in the energy of, of who they are. And do it enough times till they become it. <laughs> and when you become it, 
you stop trying to have to do it because when you are it, you won't go unconscious. So use the walking meditations as a tool, just like anybody that you're practicing anything to, to take your body out for a test drive. Take the animal out and condition it into a new state and practice it with your eyes open so that in time when you go from your cell outside to the basketball court or to the weight room or you go to the go from the, uh, the mess hall you know where you eat back to your cell you're walking like a noble being you're walking in the energy of power you're walking in the energy of who you are and and you keep doing that that becomes who you are in time so we've seen people in walking meditations I've seen this so many times start the meditation with crutches and by the end of the walk, they just, they, they're, 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 their crutches are in the garbage can and their chronic health condition is gone. Not once, not twice, not three times, numerous times. So we had a guy that was in the event uh, just a couple months ago in Cancun and he was a war veteran and um, had broken his back many times, had a terrible PTSD. Uh, he was in really bad shape. He took all kinds of drugs. He was suicidal nothing was working, then they did surgeries on both his knees. And when he came out of the surgeries, his, the pain in his feet was so bad that he asked the doctors in time to cut his legs off, to cut his feet off, because he couldn't tolerate the pain. And they said, we can't guarantee that because <laughs> you may still have phantom pain. You still, even though you don't have feet, you may, the brain may still think there's pain there. And um, so he came to the event and um, Gosh, just a really beautiful man and started, just didn't know much, just to tell me what to do, I'll just do whatever you tell me, you know, sweep uh, uh, Green Beret, he was like a special ops guy, so he fell, fell out of planes, he did everything, and his body was pretty beat up. And uh, he had one moment, uh, and when we lay down after a meditation where he felt this energy course through his nervous system, when he opened his eyes, he had no pain in his feet. Now, that was just the start. So when he got to the walking meditation, he started the event in a wheelchair. When he got to the walking meditation, he had two crutches and walked on the beach with 1,500 people with those crutches just making it. And then the next day, uh, I see him out there with one crutch and he's just leaning on that crutch and he's practicing, going against everything he learned to be the hard guy. And he starts opening his heart and the wind starts whipping and his body started to believe that he was in a new environment because the emotion was so strong the body thought that he was in the environment where he was healing now in about 10 minutes and and i didn't know much about him but i saw him with the crutches i'm watching him run down the beach and i'm watching the volunteer running behind him holding the crutch and he smoked this guy and then turned around I see him running down the beach the other way as fast as he can and there's no volunteer anymore he the guy the guy he left the guy in the dust to this day now he he has no pain he runs now again he's completely happy with himself happy with his life he's in a new body He's in a new life. He's in a whole new future. And now all of a sudden we're getting all these veterans now because all the guys that were in his, you know, branch and all the guys that he fought with and who struggle with their own health problems, mental health and physical health are showing up because he showed them what was possible. So we have no idea what we're doing today, whose lives we're going to affect tomorrow. We have no idea what possibility looks like when you change. That's the unknown and that's the cool part about it.